Welcome, little scientists. It's Miss Gisat, and I have another story about penguins for you. Our story today is called Penguins by Gail Gibbons. Here come the penguins, straight and tall. They walk with a waddle, yet look stately and dignified. There are 17 different kinds of penguins. The smallest is the little blue penguin. It is about one foot tall. The biggest of all penguins is the emperor penguin, standing about almost four feet tall. All penguins have black or bluish gray backs and white bellies. The patterns around their necks and heads are what make them look different. Some have colorful patches. Others show off brightly colored crests but they all have the same basic body shape and characteristics. All penguins are found in the Southern Hemisphere. The Adelie and Emperor penguins never leave Antarctica. Others live in New Zealand, Australia, South Africa, South America, and the Galapagos and many other islands. Penguins are birds, but they lost their ability to fly millions of years ago. Over time, they began to spend a lot of time hunting for food in frigid waters. Their wings changed into powerful, rigid flippers for swimming. Penguins have sleek, smooth bodies that glide easily through the water. They are excellent swimmers and divers. Larger ones can swim faster than 25 miles an hour. The emperor penguin can dive deeper than any other bird, about 1,500 feet. Groups of penguins may stay at sea for weeks at a time. They leap in graceful arcs through the water to grab breaths of air. Penguins feed underwater on krill, fish, and other sea creatures. Their natural enemies are fur and leopard seals, sea lions, sharks, and killer whales. When the penguins want to leave the water, they can leap up as much as six feet onto rocky shore or iceberg. They climb rocks easily, hopping from one to the other. Sometimes penguins speed over snow and ice by dropping onto their bellies and sliding. A penguin's many feathers are small and stiff. They form a warm and waterproof covering. In really cold places, penguins have an extra layer of long, downy feathers underneath. They also have thick layers of fat to keep them warm. Once a year, many penguins come together to form colonies called rookeries. It is time for the penguins to mate and raise their young. At this time, they make loud croaking and trumpeting sounds. Most of the time, penguins are quiet. What a noisy place a rookery is with all the harsh penguin calls. There can be hundreds, sometimes thousands of penguins in a rookery. They have no trouble finding their mates. While courting, they chase each other Sometimes they hold their wings away from their bodies and hold their beaks up high. Usually the same pair mates and raises its young together. It is time to build their nests. Some penguins make their nests in burrows or rocky crevices. Others build nests in the open using sticks and grasses. Some arrange small stones in a circle. The two biggest penguins, the emperor penguin and the king penguin, don't build nests. Soon after the nest is built, it is egg laying time. Most penguins usually lay two eggs. While one parent keeps the eggs warm, incubating them, the other one searches for food. Incubation can last 30 to 60 days, depending on the kind of penguin. The penguins fiercely guard the eggs and their nesting territories. King penguins and emperor penguins lay only one egg the female quickly passes her egg over to the male. He carries the egg on top of his feet. The egg is kept warm by a flap on his belly called the brood pouch. He carefully waddles around short distances without dropping the egg. During incubation time, the female swims out to sea to feed. The male emperor penguins gather together in the cold, dark polar winter. The temperatures can get as low as negative 60 degrees Fahrenheit. They protect themselves by huddling close together, constantly moving from the inside to the outside of the group and back to the inside to stay warm. During this time, they don't eat. 
They fast, living off stored body fat, and can lose up to 45% of their body weight. After about 65 days, the eggs hatch. The female returns around this time. It is her turn to care for the chick. She tucks it under her brood pouch to keep it warm. Then the male emperor penguin is free to swim out to sea to feed. The chick weighs about 11 ounces and is covered in gray soft down. The mother has food in her belly. When the chick is hungry, the mother throws up or regurgitates a meal for it. When the father returns, both parents take turns feeding and keeping the chick warm. The chick grows. When it's about eight weeks old, it weighs around four pounds. Now the chick is too big to stay under its parents' brood pouches. The chicks begin to gather into groups called creches. They huddle together to stay warm. When the sun shines, they scurry around getting stronger and practicing their balance. When a parent returns, it calls with a cry only its chick knows. The chick rushes to its parent. Meal time. The chick is fed one huge meal every few days. It takes time for parents to make each trip out to sea for food. All penguins are raised in similar ways. When the chicks are three to 10 months old, they begin to lose their gray down and grow adult feathers. Now they are called fledglings. Off they go to live on their own. They learn to hunt and survive without the help of their parents. In about four years, they will return to raise their own young. At one time, the number of penguins was declining. Eggs were harvested and penguins were hunted for their skins. Their fat was boiled down to make oil. Today, penguins are in danger. Sometimes oil spills coat their feathers. Overfishing reduces their food supply. They get tangled in fishing nets. Tourists can do harm to colonies of penguins by disturbing them. Now, there are laws for it to protect them. People work together to help penguins survive in our modern world. Some areas have been named penguin sanctuaries. Penguins can be found in zoos and aquariums. People working there care for the penguins in a clean, safe environment. It is fun to watch penguins play. Let's go do an activity together. All right, friends, let's do a little science experiment to see how penguins stay dry since their habitat is all water and ice. So what you'll need is the little penguin that I included in your activity packet. And um, you can always feel free to draw your own penguin. Um, what you'll need also are markers. I used markers and a little bit of colored pencil. Um, and then you'll definitely need a white either crayon or oil pastel. The crayon, it has to be a crayon or oil pastel, something that is waxy. Um, so make sure you have that. But then to color the rest of the penguin, it can be any, any markers or um, colored pencils or crayon. Then you will need a spray bottle and water. And I put a few drops of blue food coloring in my water. You do not have to do that. That's completely optional. And what you'll do is you'll color your penguin and then I used my white, I'm using an oil pastel to color the white fur on the inside. You can also use a black oil pastel or a black crayon to color outside, um, but definitely you need at least the white to be waxy. And you will put a nice coating around the whole, on the whole penguin. And I just printed this on regular white copy paper. Nothing fancy. All right, now, when you're finished with that, you're going to go ahead and spray 
your penguin. What are you noticing there? What do you notice about the water? Do you see that it's beating? That there are drops that are not absorbing into the paper but staying on the surface? Hmm, I wonder why. Well, the wax from my pastel or the wax from your crayon prevents the water from absorbing into the paper. And that's very similar to the way penguins feathers work. The feathers on a penguin are designed so that it repels the water and helps keep the, the penguin dry and warm. Because can you imagine it's already freezing outside where they live and if that water was to go through their feathers and touch their skin and their body they would freeze. But because the feathers are designed to repel the water they can stay warm and dry. I hope you had fun learning about penguin feathers today and penguins in our read aloud. And let me know if you try this experiment and what happens to yours. Remember to hit that like button and push the subscribe to see future episodes.